Hello, welcome back to the X-Files Revisited. We are moving on with episode 3 of season 3. This is DPO. Brian. Mm. Yep, some big stars in this one. Yeah, yeah. Yep, I'm, I'm, I'm curious as to your thoughts. I'm interested to get stuck into it. <laughs> okay, um, let's, let's do just that then. Um, so... We start off in an, an arcade. There's some teenagers tussling over a game. Uh, one of them just happens to be Jack Black. Another mm. one just happens to be Giovanni Ribisi. Uh, the the bully of the group, uh, the one who is bigger and, and kind of has started the nonsense to begin with, gets fried, um, basically. Uh, so a, a lot of weird stuff starts happening, like all the arcade machines go down and mm. the lights go out when when this kid, this Giovanni Rabisi guy, DPO, Darren his name is, Darren Peter Oswald, I believe, uh, he he seems to be controlling the electrical devices in this place and so this 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 kid this bully i say kid he's like <laughs> 28 year old actor playing a teenager uh yeah he uh he he makes a dart for his car but um something happens that basically means he gets fried uh so yeah uh, and all all to the 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 pumping score of a uh, rock kind of uh, 90s um, emo rock before yeah. emo was even a term kind of kind of soundtrack yeah yeah it's a nice sequence I, I kind of like it um, you know instantly that that guy just for being a douche is going to get it yeah um, and the whole thing say, like the lights flickering and the two um, the Jack Black menacingly saying you don't want to do that yeah um, and then the guy run out to the car and the music coming on in there as well and the, the electric bolts and then he gets fried I, I thought mm. it was quite a, a fun opening mm. oh actually the music I tell a lie the, I think the music in that particular scene was was by James it was a band a British band called James which I really like they're actually one of my favourite bands and I was very surprised to hear it uh, it must be said um, but yeah certainly later on we do go into more emo territory um, but yeah I, I I think you're right I think the, the opening scene is it, it's a bit long I must say it, for, for what we get out of it for what what it entails I feel like they maybe drag it out a bit longer than they needed to um, mm -hmm. but but yeah it sets up the the monster of the week we we kind of get a sense of who this guy you know what what this guy can do right off the bat yeah. and it's like okay that's what we're dealing with this time around um yeah I, I, I think, electro yeah electro uh, i think that's kind of one of the problems for me mm. with the episode is that we do, we do know straight away what this guy what this guy is what he can do and often that's not the case in x files we get we get a mystery yeah. We have a mystery that's built up, and then it's 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 kind of only when Mulder suddenly goes, "I've got a theory," that we're like, <laughs> "All right, that's where we're heading." But here it's like we see what this guy does, and now we're going to spend the the rest of the episode waiting for Mulder and Scully to catch up with us. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. There yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's a that's a huge huge point. Actually, I, I feel much the same. Um, I think. Mm -hmm. I think throughout the episode we'll talk about it, but I think uh, you're distracted by the fact that Ruby C and Black are there. I think mm. because you're like, I know them, I know them from other things, and, and I think that kind of takes away from the fact that the story's not as strong as it mm. should be. Yeah. Uh, Scully says that the... Yeah, just jumping straight into this, ignore the fact that in the last episode she lost her sister. We're back into normal episode territory uh, her sister isn't really mentioned Scully says the death was heat induced um, electrocution but no point of contact so it, it has ha all the hallmarks of, an, of being electrocuted mm -hmm. but there doesn't seem to be an, an entry point um, you know, yeah. usually you touch something and that electrocutes you not the case here uh, so yeah, it's at this point that douchebag sheriff of the week, 
Hey! Hey! Wants to know what F- what the FBI are doing here. Well, can we just say, like, Sheriff, part-time meteorologist, by the sounds of things? Yes, that yes, yes, yes. Well, have you noticed that whenever we go to these small towns, the sheriff always seems to be really clued in to whatever the big thing is with that <laughs> town, whether yeah. it's nature con- con- conservation or... Um, what was that other one that we had? Uh, cannibalism. The, uh, cannibalism. <laughs> cannibalism. Yeah, that was the most recent. But there, there's also Jersey Devil when he was talking about tourism and uh, mm. you know, the tourism is the lifeblood of this town, Agent Mulder. Whatever. Um, so yeah, this, we've got the same principle. Only yeah, meteorol- meteorology is the lifeblood of this particular town, and yeah. the sheriff wants to preserve that. Much the same way as a lot of sheriffs want to preserve, you know, tourism and the like. So, yeah. I, I tell you something, for, for all these arguments, because it, it really knocks Scully down in this episode, and he's a complete douche, and he, yeah. he, he just he tears her down, but you can't argue with anything he says. No. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the, the one thing that really annoyed me. Yeah, yeah. He is one like, of those annoying people that you meet who you kind of don't want to admit that they are (laughs) maybe intellectually superior um, and you just kind of want to say something like, well, your nose is big, and then kind of walk (laughs) off, you know, uh, because you've got no comeback. Um, Yes, he's a guy who clearly knows what he's talking about. He's done his research. The things he says sound reasonable, but it's it's all about the delivery. If, if Mm. If they've delivered what he had to say in a more reasonable manner, then we wouldn't be calling this a douchebag. We would be calling him a really, a really good character, a really believable, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. Um, but they make him a douchebag for no reason, really. This guy doesn't need to be a douchebag. He's, you know, he's, he's, he, he's got the argument. He's got the facts. He can just say, look, I, I, I don't know where you two are going, but here's the way I see it. And they'd have to say, yeah. Kind of right, um, but because they, because he's a douche, it just makes Mulder and Scully want to dig their heels in. So, so yeah, the sheriff chews Scully out, says they're looking for something that's not there. Jump in at any point, Mulder says Scully, which I really love. So Mulder just kind of slinks off to the back of the corridor like yeah. that child who's just maybe started an argument and then leaves while while the all the furs fly in. And Scully's just getting nailed by the sheriff, um, and then when the sheriff does, you know, does his damage and goes, she's like, "Thanks for the help, dude." <laughs> it's like, "Where were you? Where's my backup?" Um, so yeah, that was a, a funny moment. Mm-hmm. Um, so we learn that there are five victims. So yep. there, there have been four previous victims, and, and you know, this, this one makes five. All male, in their early twenties. Uh, Mulder kind of uses that to suggest you know well, well he, he says let's let's go and look at where this guy died because based on based on his uh demographic there might be mm. a particular place that we can figure out that he was at you know um so they go to check the crime scene Mulder says the only place that would have been open is the arcade um so they go in because he was there, he got killed. So basically, the the time of death, Mulder saying yeah. the only place it would have been open is the arcade. They they go in and Scully questions Jack Black. Zero. Um, zero. Yes, I, I'm not going to call him Zero because that's a stupid character name. Uh, <laughs> yes. I I will. Yeah, he he will be known as Jack Black. Darren Peter Oswald, however, because let's face it, Giovanni Ribisi is a pretty stupid name. Uh, Darren Peter Oswald's uh, name is all the high scores on all the machines. So Mulder notices that on all these arcade machines, DPO is is the top scorer. Um, so he's also one of the five victims, the only one to survive. Um, mm. So, hmm, yes, he, he was... Uh, found presumably struck by lightning 
which, which he was the, the only one of these five victims to actually be struck by light, lightning in the in the natural and, sense of the word. Yeah, and for the characters, this is a really sort of strange occurrence. It's a good mystery to get their teeth in, and uh, for the viewer, we're instantly like, ah, struck yeah. by lightning, now yeah. controls the electricity. Yeah, cool. pretty much. It, it, it is that episode of Smallville. You throw a meteor rock in there and you've got your yeah. Smallville villain of the week. Um, obviously, this this was done long before Smallville came on the scene, but it's just... It just... Look at the style of this episode, the way it is. And I think a lot of it is down to the emo kind of vibe that comes off it. Mm. It it doesn't feel like X Files to me. It feels like a different show. It it does feel like Smallville, and that's I, I, that is nothing against Smallville, as you know. I'm a big fan of Smallville, uh, but yeah. that has its it has its own flavour. It has its own vibe. That it, it works for Smallville. It, whereas here, it just the whole vibe of this one feels a little bit, yeah, a bit off. Mm -hmm. um, for X Files. Uh, so, M Mrs. Kavit, Mrs. Kavit, <laughs> is looking for her husband at the garage um, when Darren makes her jump. So she goes. It's this woman, Mrs. Kavit. She walks into this garage, and Darren appears from out of this car. He's been working on the car. We, we so we learn from here that he's a mechanic. Mm -hmm. um, she's looking for her husband, who owns the garage and he suddenly gets really creepy and oh, yeah. apologizes for the things he said uh yeah mr kavit arrives tells darren that mulder and scully are coming so yeah he's he's clearly had a, a call on his mobile or whatever the mm -hmm. fbi want to come and speak to to darren so he goes in and tells them that that they're on the way um but yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think it, BC really plays um, creeps particularly well, doesn't he? <laughs> He's got that dead-eyed kind the, of the thing. Dead eyed, it? yeah. It's like the, the expressionless the longest, face. Yeah, like mm. for the longest time, um, like early on in his career, I I I wondered if that if that was his face, if that was right. like it, had they cast someone who had slight mental deficiencies or whatever, and because. It was after this role that he got, you know, he he he. he I saw him in Friends. I, mm. He may have even got the role in Friends before this. I don't know. I can't remember which order they came in. But I, I think after this, he got the part of Phoebe's brother in Friends, and he's got that same dead eye expression yeah. and that kind of childlike, you know, mental age of ten in an adult's body vibe about him. And so because of these two roles coming straight after one another, I'm like, oh. Like it's, is he actually like that? But he's just able to channel it. And like he's, he's, they're, they're mm. able to get him to perform with it. And it was only like when I saw him later on in his career and saw, oh right, no, he can do normal. Okay, he's just he's just got he's just yeah he's he's, just, got, he's got black eyes, the devil's black eyes, eye, the devil's eyes. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's it's no, it's it's nice to to see that actually he he you know that is a performance thing and not yeah. yeah. Uh, so he's, he's good to look, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We need we need someone who's slightly deranged, a little off kilter, and he just suddenly goes, <laughs> re relaxes his eyes, boom, he's there, he's in the mode. Uh, yeah, okay. So Mulder and Scully arrive and question Darren, and mm. Mulder, like in the course of the questioning. Because because they learn that Darren had you know they, they know he's been struck by lightning and survived and uh, <laughs> things like that. M Mulder asks him, "Are you lucky?" And um, then all of a sudden, Mulder's phone just sets on fire in his pocket. Um, yeah. he's, he's getting a little bit too close to uh, to a, to a theory being said out loud. So Darren proves that theory by setting his his phone alight. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It would be. Yeah, which, which leads me to one of the things about the character I just don't like his simplistic nature. Mm. I just I, I don't know why it, it just kind of rubs me up the wrong way. Um, because it, it it becomes more imbecilic and more um, silly as the, as the episode goes on. 
you know, it becomes mm. more apparent that he's not working with the full faculties. Yeah. I just, I just, I don't know. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it, it feels like... Why is that it, choice been made? What? Why is, why is that... A, well, I, I, I think it's, it's just a character, isn't it? It's like they have to... The, the main reason this guy is a psychopath... Um... Because, like, you know, you get somebody who's highly intelligent who's given these this gift, if you want to call it that. Um, <laughs> sorry, but can you just slightly tilt your laptop because the sun is completely blocking you out? There we go. <laughs> just ever so slowly. Yeah, ever so slowly. You were just fading. You were just fading G into obscurity. Give me one like, second. Graham, where are you going? <laughs> 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 anyway, I, yeah, I, I didn't um, even notice. <laughs> I'm like, I'm gonna have to say something at some point, and it's like you just go, you're going further, you're slipping away. I'm like, come back, come back, come back from the light, <laughs> come yeah. back from the light. Group. But like, if, you know, if 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 this guy were highly intelligent. We'd be in a completely different story, I think. Mm. Um, okay. And ultimately, this has to be a story about someone who's got the hots for his teacher. Um, and when given a little bit of power, goes a bit power crazy and doesn't yeah, quite yeah, but understand he... the, 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 la the social barriers. Um, uh -huh. So he's got a teacher and a job. Mm. A, a job that, was, that he, was, he got through his teacher. Right. Because she felt sorry for him. Yeah. So it's like, you know, it's, so, so, so there is that thing there about a wolf in sheep's clothing and, you know, just, just again, this notion that, yeah, giving power, with great power comes great responsibility. You know, it's that, <laughs> it's that old adage. But if you, put, if you put great power into the hands of someone who doesn't even have the mental faculties to... To deal with life, whose you know whose main reason for existing is getting the, the highest score on a video game, then then yeah, you're in for trouble, aren't you? And I, I think that's essentially what it's saying. I think that's why we have this character the way it is. But like you, I, I it does rub me the wrong way. There is something about it that kind of yeah, I just I, I find him annoying. It's the simple yeah. fact of the matter. I find him really annoying and very emo. I keep coming back to that word, emo. It's a word that I don't think had even been coined at the time that this episode came out. But it's like, yeah, you look back on it now and it's like, man, this is like the, the poster boy for, for emo culture. But yeah, whatever. Um, so Darren's mother, <laughs> what a fine specimen of a woman she is. It's watching the TV, insulting her son at you know every opportunity she gets. Who's kind of standing there flipping channels with his mind. Yeah. Um, Jack Black comes to to get Darren, uh, asking if he wants to play out. Uh, Darren, <laughs> <laughs> are you playing out? Darren wants to fry some cows. Uh, brings lightning down on himself. But he's he ends up being fine. So even though he, even though he gets struck by his own lightning, mm. he, he ends up being okay. Oh, and just you get that idea that he just is extremely childlike, but in yeah. that, that that kind of manner of wanting to go and fry cows. But then you also have that way of you know one of the, the biggest signs for serial killers is the you know the, the want to harm yeah. animals and things like that. So. He's still not interested in this character, to be fair. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, 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 he's not a very interesting character because cause he, he, he. I mean, clearly he's mentally ill, but like, it, it just it just feels like that annoying kid in class, mm. back in school, who really you just wish would kind of shut up and go away. Yeah. Um, What's the attraction with the Zero's character with DPO because? He always seems to be like, wanting to hang about and just be friendly, but they seem to be um, very, very different. You know, he's he's afraid of DPO in several well, ways. Well, 
Yeah, I mean, he is now. You, like, you got to bear in mind these these guys were probably friends long before you know he he got the power that he does. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I think he stays friends with him now because of that. Uh, in in many ways, because uh, out of fear, really, um, mm -hmm. and kind of tries to build him up, build his ego up, in order to 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 stay safe around him. Um, but probably don't realise that in doing so, in building this guy's ego up, you're actually sending him further off the deep end, which yeah. which is why ultimately you know he gets killed. But yeah. Still yeah. not interested though. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the cows are dead. Uh, yep. We have we now have a a crime scene. Um, douchebag sheriff strikes again. Mulder finds a footprint burnt into the uh, into the 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 lightning strike mark on the ground. Um, mm. But yeah, dou douchebag sheriff is kind of you know. We've we've had reports of lightning. We've got the meteoro meteorologist department literally just over that hill. They reported lightning last night, and you know in the area and all that. It's, this is a clear case of cows being struck by lightning. To which Mulder is like, there "Seems to be a lot of those kind of instances around here." And uh, um, yeah, Sheriff and, Sheriff and, comes and Scully, some... Scully just agrees. She's yeah. a, she's like, yeah, I'm not arguing again. <laughs> He's right. No, I'm, I'm not going there. I'm not going there. I'm just going to leave it. Um, but, yeah. Okay. So, Scully examines it, the uh, the footprint, and mm -hmm. finds a substance, antifreeze, the kind you use at a garage. And who works at a garage? But Darren Peter Oswald. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Dun. Because I mean, there's nowhere else that you're ever going to get antifreeze. No, you know, so no, it's only you going can't, to be can't in, pick it up at your local hardware store or anything no, like that. It's just lying about everybody's yeah. garages at the house or you know, mm. back gardens or whatever. It's just yeah. it's there. It's yeah. only at this garage. Yeah, like like seriously, why not motor oil? You know that that would have been a more hmm. yeah. You know, like a bit brake, of motor oil fluid. in there, brake <laughs> fluid. Yeah, brake like brake fluid. That'd be that'd be the key one because, like, you don't really tend to put no, brake you fluid in your car. That's something you you take your car to a garage to get done. Antifreeze, hmm. right? Okay. Um, whatever. <sighs> so. I mean, it's a bit of circumstantial evidence which adds to the rest of the circumstantial evidence, which is namely that those cows are literally just across from Darren's house. So, yeah, it's still it's still not enough to get a court order, I don't think. Um, no. Darren sits on uh, like a billboard sign by the look of it. Yeah. Uh, changing traffic lights. Trying to trying to crash cars, you know, as, <laughs> as you do. <laughs> what a guy! What a guy! He so he wants Mrs. Kavit. You know, we 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 already know this. We get this, but we get this in in conversation. He's he's basically pining over her. Got mm. delusions about settling down with her. How that's going to look with him? I I no idea. Um, Jack Black says he's got no chance, um, which. <laughs> I, I, which I, I, I don't kind of get really I don't get why he would try and push his buttons that much mm. you know the power of this guy and like you've literally essentially just called him a loser like yeah. no, I mean, not even subtly you've, you've literally just called this guy a loser um, yeah Darren crashes some cars and gets rather excited by it but mm -hmm. Okay. Mulder and Scully go to Darren's room. His mum lets them in. They find a shoe match and a picture of Mrs. Kavit from a high school yearbook stuck into a porn magazine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's Psycho 101. <laughs> so he's taken her face from a, uh, <laughs> from a high school yearbook. <laughs> 
and place it over the picture of a porn star in a porn magazine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's what we call the old school Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. Did that by any chance give you flashbacks, Brian? <laughs> oh no, 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 not at all. I just, I just find it hilarious the lengths <laughs> this guy goes to. Man alive. Okay, ah, it's making me feel lightheaded. Um. <laughs> But, uh, right, Mrs. Kavit is at the crash site of these car. Oh, sorry, Mr. Kavit, I should say. Mm. Mr. Kavit is at the, the crash site. Presumably, he gets called out there to tow the vehicles away, which is why he's there. Um, and then he starts having a heart attack. Uh, obviously, D Darren is amongst the crowd, kind of still stood there watching his handiwork. Um, he get he gets a heart has a heart attack or something. Darren stops the defibrillators from working, but still brings the guy around anyway, yeah. using his own hands. So, he put, it's like, so at, at first you think, oh, he's killing this guy. He's removing him from the equation to so that he can move in on Mrs. Kavit. But no, actually, he wants a hero complex instead. He's going for the old hero complex. Mm. Um... Okay, make your mind up. <laughs> it's, it's almost kind of like torturing the guy. Yeah. You know, it just seems... Yeah. Um, it, it's just, the guy's all over the place. Um, but, uh... Right. But it's a, it's a cool sequence with the hands on the, the chest. I do kind of like it. Yeah. Fun. Pointless, yeah. still not interested. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, uh, I, I, I just find this guy so mopey. Yeah, it's, it's, it's hard because we're spending a lot of time with him. You know, mm. we usually spend a lot more time yeah. with Mulder and Scully. You're spending a lot of time with this guy and he's just not interesting. You can't no. uh, um, put yourself in his shoes any way, shape or form. You can't, you can't no. find anything likeable to attach yourself to him, to care no. in any way, shape or form. It's just a cold, cold character that... Mm. You, 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 want, you don't want to be near them. It's, a, it's, it's like, like if you look at slashers, slasher mm. films, you know, the, 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 the icons of those movies are not people that you, um, that you want to like. You don't necessarily like them. But in, in a really weird, messed up way, you root for them because the people that they tend to go after are douchebags. Mm. You know, they're, they're jocks who bully other kids or you know people would be referred to as slutty and things things like that you know we see this time and again in slashes um but here you can't even have that because the people that he's victimizing are nice people are people that you they're just ordinary joes you know like it's, this guy is basically a douche he's he doesn't have the 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 kind of serial killer vibe like a Freddy or a Michael Myers or that kind of thing uh, so the, the, yeah there's nothing to engage with this character there's no reason for us to to engage with him or to want to mm -hmm. spend this much time that we're being forced to spend with him so yeah. <clears throat> at hospital Mulder tries to talk to Mrs Kavit about DPO but she avoids him Scully tells Mulder that Miss, Mr. Kavit was resuscitated, but not by the defibs. Mm. DPO was present. Mulder says that DPO's accident caused an unusual imbalance of his electrolytes, <laughs> which allowed him electric man powers. Yeah. It just seems crazy because... I don't know, just... Like, back then... May have sounded plausible. Now you, you get look as Ed with extra electrolytes <laughs> in them. You know, so. yeah, <laughs> yeah, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure if I drink enough of that, I'm not going to be able to control the electricity. <laughs> but <laughs> worth a try. <laughs> Give it a go. Um, it's like Popeye and his spinach, isn't it? But I haven't. Mm. So Mulder and Scully bring Darren in for questioning. Scully asks him about his boss. Darren says he saved him uh, via CPR 
really quick CPR. Um, yeah. Must be said. Uh, Muller doesn't buy it. He thinks that Darren caused the heart attack. Ooh. Obviously. We know he did. Uh, yeah, we know he did. Yeah. yeah. Mo- just, Mulder just and Sc- no, no. Mulder and Scully go to see Mrs. Kavit. She tells them about prank calls and Darren saying that he has powers. Scully says mm. she doesn't have to be afraid anymore as long as they can count on her testimony. Yeah! Good luck, Scully. Yep. <laughs> oh, man. It's just... It, it, the more this episode goes on, and even talking about it now, it, mm. it's really not interesting. It's really like a flawed experiment. It's one of these episodes mm. that, if it wasn't for Ruby C and Black in it, I think it would be one of these ones that you would probably jettison yeah. out, out of the series. It's just, it's, there's nothing that's going to make me come back to it. Mm. It's just, it's just, I find it frustrating that there, there, it seems like such a wild misstep. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. drain the energy from the conversation. <laughs> it's just yeah, like like what what is Scully thinking? Seriously, we're, yeah, we're gonna like I I'm, I'm assuming at this point that well well actually no, no no she's still not buying it is she she's still not buying the whole electro electro man kind of thing but uh, yeah so douchebag sheriff lets Darren go. Hmm. Awesome. What a guy. Get, gets into an argument with Scully while Mulder rings Mrs. Kavit, who isn't home. So mm. they, 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 they've got to find her before Darren does. Uh, I'm trying to remember, there was one point when uh, Mulder kind of reels off some facts to the sheriff, and he's like, yeah, I did my homework, you know, because because uh, there was a there was a moment when the sheriff was like, you obviously you obviously didn't do your homework, you know, and uh, yeah, I, I don't know if it was that bit, but anyway, mm. whatever, who cares? Darren kills Jack Black, mistakenly thinking he's grassed him up, so he, he yep. thinks that the reason he was called into the police was because Jack Black grassed him up, <clears throat> which he didn't, obviously. All the while, this, so this this was the scene. All the while to a heavy rock track. It just it fit like this is the most emo moment of the entire episode, and perhaps of any show ever mm. of all time. You know, it, it's like you've got this. This is the the, the running down the the street moment, is it? Yeah. So he's, yeah. So he's, he's um, but the, the lighting and the leaves and the wind and the, yeah. the, the, the almost. Do you know what it felt a little bit, very slightly, like phenomena. It did, it did. Yes, yeah, the it crazy did. score and the, the, the just mm. setups. Yeah, like just really kind of just out of place. Like I say, if, if, if we're watching Smallville right now, this wouldn't be out of place. They mm. they use that kind of music, you know, the soft rock music. They they do like operatic, over the top sequences like this with with the villains and and whatnot, where you have that the camera kind of pulling into them, and you you have a a shot on their face that maybe goes on just a little bit longer than it should and yeah. and it's like that's great i love smallville i'll watch that in smallville i don't want it here it's just the tone is completely off it doesn't feel like x files at all it just again that word emo this this is so emo just with that with that music choice that's over the top of it and lingering on rabisi's face as he looks on his evil deeds and uh, it's just like oh man no end just end please um okay so yes uh, yeah turn my page <laughs> um Mulder and Scully go to the hospital to get Mrs Kavit who refuses to leave her husband Jack Black's body arrives in the lift hmm. yeah somebody's dragged it all oh, yeah the area. yeah it's like, why did he bother? Why, why is he doing this? Hmm. Why, why, literally, why has he done this? Why has yeah. he put Jack Black's body in the lift? Um, like, I, do, I don't credit this guy with enough intelligence to have had the foresight to think that th- uh, the law enforcement guys would have gone 
to protect Mr. or Mrs. Kavit. Mm. So there is no reason for him, nothing warrants him trying to create a distraction so that he can come round the other way. Yeah. If, any, if anything, this just draws more attention to himself. Oh. And because the physical fact, exertion needed to carry him, because yes. Jack Black's about a foot taller as well. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. he's not a he's not a light looking guy, is he? No. And and the as far as he's concerned, he's been let go. There's nothing against him. The sheriff let him go. They've got nothing on him. Hmm. There is no reason for this guy to to need to cause a distraction. There's nothing stopping him from just walking into that hospital casual as anything and, and, and thinking he's just going to bump into Miss, Mrs. Kavit. Um, nonsensical. Uh, it, it, it's like it's creating dramatic, uh, like a, a dramatic showdown out of nothing. Yep. You know, it's like it comes out of nowhere. So yeah, Mulder finds a blown out, a blown out pal. So yeah, M M so Mulder's gone after Darren. Uh, I, 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 he's gone down like the fire escape. He finds a blown out power grid, power grid in the stairwell, uh, and while he's kind of presumably staring at that for the next twenty minutes, Scully comes face to face with Darren, pulls her gun on him. He gets angry. Mrs. Kavit goes with him to keep him calm. Um, yeah. Like she's the only good thing right now with regards to yeah. the periphery characters. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. It's a good, it's a smart decision because um, she knows obviously what he's capable of, and it seems like mm. it seems like a smart choice to do at the time. At the Although time, just kind of yeah. wish that Scully would pull the trigger. Yeah, just end it there and yeah. then. Um, but there is that scepticism from Scully that he doesn't really have these powers, though. So in her in her mind, she'd just be shooting some. You know, kid with special needs, basically. <laughs> um, it's the most polite way to put it. Um, so Darren um, tries to <laughs> Darren tries to sweet talk Mrs. Kavit. I, I, you know, um, with the dead so, eyes. Uh, yeah, with, with the dead eyes. Uh, talks about <laughs> what um, what car they're gonna take, and then he starts like kind of trying to pick a car, you know, yeah. like um, yeah, I f f no clue with this guy what's going on in his head, what he thinks is going to end up with them. Uh, he just comes off as a pervy teenager uh, who remembers being able to see through her dress <laughs> on the first day of school. Like literally, that is your chat up line. Hey, Mrs. Kavit. Remember the first day of school when I could see through your dress? I saw a bit of nipple. Yeah. It's like, dude. Seriously. Um, uh, when the sheriff shows up, uh, just as Darren is deciding which car to steal, Mrs. Kavit runs away. Fear takes hold and she, she darts. Darren chases after, but Mulder grabs Mrs. Kavit and drags her into a bush looking rather dodgy and when he can't find her Darren blows his lid and fries both himself and douchebag sheriff like yeah. we we don't need to see douchebag sheriff get fried no we don't no. it's 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 like <sighs> it, it's comeuppance because he's a bit it's, of a douchebag it, it but is. the guy's not wrong <laughs> It's, it's, really... Yeah, it's not wrong, and it's it's like it feels like a moment written. It's 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 designed to make the audience go, yeah, yeah, doofbag sheriff cocked it, but you haven't earned it. No, you've not earned that from us as a, as an audience. You know, as 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 a as a program that has been well written, you've you've not earned that moment from us. Like, if you know, if if this guy had a piece of information that, if if he was allowed to live, would then give Mulder the truth he's been looking for, then I, I get why he has to die. He doesn't have to die in this episode. He's served a purpose. 
It's just there literally because the writers think the audience will go, yeah, and yep. I don't. Um, so, yeah. So there. Well, so there. Mulder and Scully look at Darren, um, who sits inside a psychiatric institution. They, they kind of look at him through this glass. Scully says tests show nothing and that DPO appears normal. Almost as if the second lightning strike has taken away his powers, but we quickly mm. learn that ain't the case because he sat there flipping channels whilst listening to The Offspring, which is literally the single most emo band ever to have graced the planet. Nothing says emo like The Offspring. You really don't like emo, do you, Brent? <laughs> I, I, I don't I no I don't <laughs> I, 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 I went through a period of it where I was listening to that kind of music but I wasn't I wasn't the emo guy you know what I mean like mm. you, you you see them you know you see these teenagers all dressed in black with really mopey faces thinking how you know how the world has done them wrong and, and, and like listening to the offspring and I'm like pull your head out of your ass you know it's like I enjoy that music but I don't feel like I need to go to uh, Suicide Central in order to to, to enjoy it anyway we're mm. going down a road that we don't yeah that we shouldn't go down but um yeah thoughts wrap ups wrap ups, yeah. wrap -ups. Yeah. okay so yeah. I, Go on, you you go. Yep, it's it's uninteresting, uninspired, poorly written characters. Uh, it maligns Mulder and Scully for large portions of the episode, so we can stick with a character that we just have zero interest in. Um, mm. It's got some big name actors, and other than that, I think it would be an episode that you would never talk about. The the robot of any kind of mystery, like you said, there's there's nothing to keep you like on the edge of your seat about this. Um, nothing at all so it's just it's a completely poor episode for me and I, and I said at the start of this season that I was going to be a little bit harder on the episodes that didn't do well enough for me this is one of these episodes that does, did not do enough um, to, to even be regarded as a good episode so for me it gets one and a half out of five yeah um, I <laughs> oh man it just I don't even want to admit this. I really don't. But I actually, after watching the episode, I gave it a three. Um, <laughs> I, I did. I gave it a three when I was sat there watching it. I gave it a three. Um, talking it through, like, e even before we came on, I already knew I was going to drop my grade. Because when I gave it that, when I gave it that three, I was like, I think probably more likely a two point five. But after talking about it, yeah, one and a half. I just, I. I I can't even give it the two to be honest because I just I think it's badly written I think it, it says something that an actor of Rabisi's caliber can't lift this up mm. and Jack Black can't lift this up the, their, their characters are just annoying I don't want to follow them we spend far too much time with them um, we feel like we've got a few X-Files tropes in there the douchebag sheriff, the killing of the douchebag sheriff, just because he is a douchebag sheriff, I, it would have actually been more of an interesting twist to have him survive, mm. simply because he's the douchebag and he gets to survive. It's like, oh, well, there's a turn up for the books. Um, no, it's it's not good. One and a half. Yeah. So let's put DPO in the, in the rear view mirror and I look yeah. forward to uh, Clyde Brookman. Is this a big episode? Is this one that we should look forward to? This is a very big episode. This episode won several awards during uh, Emmy season and whatnot. Uh, one of those went to Frank Boyle as the the character of the week, the central character. It's written that by Darren Morgan. Morgan, as you know, as you know, he he wrote Humbug. He's mm. One of the best writers on the show, I think. His episodes are, are standouts. I think it's a great episode, uh, and I'm really looking forward to hearing your thoughts on it. So, yep. So we'll see you next week when we are talking about Clyde Brookman. Thanks for watching. <laughs>